Okay, part two, day two of the new mill. Got the uh, spindle bearings ran in last night. Sounds fairly decent. Um, you know, we've got no howling or growling or anything like that that really concerns me. By the time it ran, you know, we were running top speed. By the time we got finished with that, and it had run for, oh, probably an hour and a half, pretty much steady at the different speeds. You know, we started at the bottom and worked up. Um, why it was a little warm, you know, I mean, you could you could tell spindle was warm and everything it wasn't exceptionally hot, so I think we're basically broke in. I'm not going to be overly concerned about it. If we have problems down the road, we'll go back and address them, but I think everything's okay at that point in time. Um, got some likes and dislikes I'll share with you, and then I'm going to get around this afternoon yet and throw an indicator on a few places here and just kind of get an idea of how accurate it is and what's going on, you know, at least a, an initial initial check out on it to see what it's going to do here. Um, been gathering up parts and stuff and uh, said I was going to make some changes. Well, right off the bat, why? These are the hand wheels off of the G1007. And since it's going to full CNC, I don't need hand wheels on it. So uh, these are going to go. Now, they do not fit exactly. This was the hand wheel that will fit down here on the on the end of the x-axis. Anyway, this end was, this is the x-axis table travel and um, these were set up so that they were preloaded for the ball screws when I converted it to CNC so this one's got a bushing in here the bushing is actually the right size but it needs a little modification it's a little bit long and a little bit um, you know I need to cut out fingers on it for clearance I could I could not do that but I think I will It'll just make it fit a little bit better the uh, y-axis is still in the original setup configuration. It's a little bit tall or a little bit small for this shaft, so I'm going to have to actually open up the bore in it a little bit and uh, do that. And same way with the Z axis, I'm going to have to open up the bore in there to, to fit on there. The hand wheels are virtually the same size. Um, they all weigh about the same with the cutouts on these and the cast iron handles there. I haven't weighed them, but they're awful close to being the same weight as on the uh, as the original steel handles that came on the on the uh, 0755 here. And that's going to be one of the projects I finish this afternoon probably, or work on this afternoon probably off camera. I'm going to go ahead, fit them up, then I'll tape up the, the polished parts, go to the sandblaster, sandblast them and powder coat them. I've got some green that will kind of match this. You know, I'll just go ahead and powder coat them up and it'll be fine. I have a quill readout, a uh, nice little bit of toil that I've had for years and years. I contemplated the mounting here. Now, I know that I'm going to pull the digital readout off of the G001007 and it's going to go over here. Um, so I was contemplating put, putting this quill scale on here for right now. And I thought of a couple of different ways to do things with that, with the with the Schumatec digital readout, but I don't think I'm going to mount this. I'll save this for another another use. I I tucked it away and set it, set it aside for another use quite a while ago, well, before I put the digital readout on the G1007. So I saved it for a rainy day, and I'm still saving it for a rainy day. I've already put a new battery in it, tried it out. Works fine, but I've decided I'm not going to mess with putting it on here. We're going to go strictly to the digital readout. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. One of the first things that's going to happen is going to be the little um, power draw bar. You know, and uh, the setup on the G1007 is a, is a little cheap butterfly 3 8 butterfly ratchet, got an air cylinder for them, and, and they're set up and spring loaded. That's going to be one of the first projects, and we'll use that as a project. I'll, uh, I'll take you guys along for that entire build. I do still have one cylinder. When I built the other one, why I'd ordered probably two of these cylinders, and uh, I had one sitting around, so this is the one that will go up here. The mounting will be a little bit different than it is on the G1007 because the way it's set up on that machine, the uh, little butterfly ratchet sits right over the right over the quill or the draw bar and then the air cylinder sits behind it and there's not room for that so I don't know if the air cylinder is going to sit out front which would be fine it's not going to be a clearance issue or any problems there or if we'll set it to the side I don't know exactly how we'll set it up we'll get to looking a little bit closer and, and decide how we're going to do that um, if I use existing mounting holes there's just the four holes on the top here that that hold the top of the gearbox on onto the housing um, I could potentially put some longer bolts in there 
and use that as a mounting, and that's probably the best thing to do. But we'll get that far and decide how we're going to set it up. Um, so a little bit of designing there to go along with it. Hand wheels are going to change. For digital readouts, I'm going to put Schumatech scale, uh, Schumatech digital readout on here. For now, I'm going to pull the digital readout off of the G1007. Now, that's the earlier 350 DRO that uh, Schumatech put out as a kit. And we've talked about them before. I've got several of them kicking around on several different machines. On the G1007, that setup right there has been rock solid. That's been a really good setup. Now, I've got a couple of the later 550 models that I've had up and running. And I actually had one on this mill. And I added the LCD screens to them. And when I reprogrammed with the LCD screen, why, I had problems with them. It, I don't know if it was computer or what the deal was. So I think I have to go back and look at those. At some point, I will probably get one of those running. And that's probably what will go on this mill. Because it gives me the uh, readouts for, I can use for speed control, I can do any of a number of things. And one of the things that I could potentially do is along with having a, a quill readout for the z-axis, I could also add another scale and use it as a, uh, as a head height digital readout. So I could actually run a digital readout off the head, which is probably kind of redundant. I'll probably not be able to utilize that, or I probably never would utilize that, but it's an option. It's something I may look at, but there's several things we can do with those. So that's kind of where that is. Things I like, things I don't like. I've added to my list as I've, as I've played with this. Cable management's a little bit marginal in some instances, and it's just little things. I think it would probably be fine, but there are things that I'm going to change. The motor to raise and lower the head, the cord for that comes straight out of its fitting and then it just hangs down over. I think it could be, have a little more support. You know, we can add, and it'd be on the other side, but right up here it's got four mounting bolts on this motor, or I could use the head mounting bolts. I think there needs to be a little bracket there with some sort of a cable tie, so we've got a nice little loop in that, uh, in that cable. And the rest of them, they're okay, but they're kind of hung willy-nilly a little bit, so I think I want to address some of that. There again, nothing major, no major issues with it, just little things that I think could be better. Table locks. We've, I talked about those yesterday, said I didn't like them. Got a comment that, yes, that's been a problem with them, and I wanted to be sure and shorten them up to, so they cleared, otherwise they'd scar up the ways. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to build new, I'm going to build new handles for them. They'll probably be a kind of a fancy little ball handle. I'll probably use the existing studs and, and we'll just, uh, I'll probably set up the CNC lathe and we'll turn out some little, I don't know, stainless steel balls or something like that, kind of along the same lines as the uh, Atlas ball handles that I already produce or the, the um, corn style ball handles. And we'll just make a, make a nice, hopefully classy looking little handle that will go on there. Um, other issues. Oh, we can talk about the table in a minute. There's a couple things about the table that I noticed that I haven't completely worked out yet. I, and nothing wrong, but just things that are different from the G1007. Uh, controls on it. They have got, to power it on, you've got a power on button. And this is my complaint right here is the emergency stop switch. The main power is run through this emergency stop switch. So you power it on once everything's set and your machine's powered. And you've got spindle forward, spindle reverse, and let's see, we're in uh, we're in first gear high range. Let's just this is this is the sound of it. So I'm I'm not unhappy with the bearings running. I can kinda hear them. I don't know how that's gonna sound on camera, whether they're gonna be loud or quiet or what the deal is, but they're okay I think. Um, Elevation for the head up and down is there, not exceptionally fast. I think it's only got a little 1 horsepower motor on there, um, but it does okay. The thing I don't like is there's not a master power switch. It's all run through the emergency stop switch. Uh, in the big picture of things, it probably doesn't matter, but I would prefer to see a master switch, or even when you power it on, if you push that again, it would power off, but it doesn't do that. To kill the power to it, you have to use the emergency stop switch. I don't like that. The To me, the emergency stop switch is just that. If you've got 
if you've got something going terribly wrong, you hit that button and that kills everything. But I don't like that as my primary master switch, basically. So you can't power it again until you reset your emergency stop switch, which makes sense, but I don't care for the way that's wired. So I probably won't change it. There's not really a good place to mount a mount another one that you know a master switch I can do something but I probably won't I'll probably leave it the way it is I just don't care for it the table is um, actually a little bit smaller than the table on the G1007 and it's within a half an inch or something I was measuring yesterday and I'll go back and measure it again at some point in time but the actual work envelope of the table appears to be quite a bit smaller and I don't think it's a whole lot smaller but I do believe it is smaller and it appears to be smaller the other differences are the G0007 G1007 has four table T-slots in it whereas this mill only has three so this has only got three slots in it the T-slots are smaller where on the G1007 why it has, I believe, 5 8 um, T-slots in it. The T-nuts are slightly smaller for this table. The, the T-nuts, the 5 8 T-nuts, that go on the G1007 don't fit in this table. So this is going to take a smaller T-nut. Um, T-slots are a little bit narrower. I'm probably going to go to a 7 16 system to anchor everything down on this table. Um, I'd, I'd anticipated just transferring over all my T-nuts and uh, all of the hold down stuff from the G1007 over to this machine and they won't fit, they're a little bit too big for, for here. So this is going to be a, all its own tooling. Um, so that'll be projects along the way. Otherwise I don't see a problem. Uh, everything will work fine. The, the work envelope is big enough for what I want to do on this machine and will make it work. Um, you know, there again, it's got some limitations compared to a bigger machine, but this is what we got, and, and I'm relatively happy with this. The only other thing that I've got, and I'll take anybody's ideas that they've got, leave them in the comments section for me below, is I need to mount the digital readout, and I need a storage solution for things like TTS tooling and um, well, just all the standard tooling, R8 collets. All of that stuff. On the one hand, I thought that I would probably set up a toolbox for it, just a rollaway cabinet, something like that, to do it. And I've kind of changed my mind. What I'm thinking I'm going to do, and there's a couple reasons for it. One of them is I would like to isolate the main reading head of the digital readout from the vibrations of the machine. So, and for storage for R8 collets and any tooling like that, um, oh, like for a collet rack, I will probably do a cast aluminum collet rack. But what I think I'm what I'm thinking about doing is getting a piece of square tubing of fairly substantial size, uh, mounting a base plate on it, one or possibly two, depending if you know which side, one or both sides of it, mounting it on a base plate so it's freestanding, and I can mount it the back corner of the mill on either side probably and be able to bolt my accessories on there if I go ahead and and pre-drill a, a piece of four by four inch square tubing you know quarter wall thickness something that's substantial not going to move around and is going to hold tap, tapped holes uh, go ahead pre-drill it pre-tap it have it ready and then any accessories I have that I mount on there why I can just drill and bolt on accordingly so I'm kind of thinking about doing that um, that would allow me to mount the, the digital readout the same way I can still mount it on this side on an arm off of that mount and it's going to isolate the head from the from the vibration of the mill and uh, give me a little more versatility about how I set things up. Um, I'd originally thought about mounting it to the stand like I've done before on some of the things on the G007, 1007. Um, you know, you could mount them to the base screws back here that, that secure the mill to the stand. I could drill the column and, and mount things off of that. But I'm thinking a better solution is just to do an upright independent tool tree, basically, or whatever. Be universal enough so that I can mount whatever accessories I've got on it and I can change it around if I need it. So, if anybody's got any ideas on that, leave them for me below. Let me know what you think. And that's kind of what I got. I think I'm going to... Uh, 
throw an indicator on here. Now I haven't even set a vise up. I've got it pretty well cleaned off. I, I've still got the R-rate adapter that holds the drill chuck in here. I haven't taken it out from when I got it. I think I'm just going to throw an indicator on there, see what that tells me for run out, which isn't really going to tell anything because it could be out around too. Um, but we'll do it that way. Then we may clean it out and check inside the, the collet. I'd like to know how well the table travels, and I'm not sure. Yeah, there may be enough surface that we can we can get on the uh, front of that front edge of the table with an indicator to see what it does. I don't have a real good way to tell why travel yet. Um, I think for mounting digital readouts, I'm going to mount it pretty much the same way that I've got. I'm going to try and protect the scales a little bit more. I think there's enough room on the back edge of the table that I can mount it without it running into the column back there. Um, with it all back there, there's a little more than a half an inch. Looks like about five eighths of an inch, which may or may not actually be there. But with the uh, accordion way covers on the back when they're fully compressed, well, that still leaves about five eighths of an inch. It looks like. So I think that will that will uh, work to mount the x-axis scale. Y-axis I'll probably do about the same as I did on the G1007. Um, I don't know if that mounting will exactly transfer over or not. And I, you know, I want to improve it if I can. We may tuck it up a little bit, a little bit tighter, and I want to build some covers for those scales a little bit better than what I've done before. Well, I don't think I can complain about that. I wonder what specs show it's supposed to be. I wonder if we got a um, fancy little test sheet with this saying how accurate this is within a ten millionth of an inch. Huh, apparently we didn't get a uh, you know, normally they send you a sheet saying that it's as close to perfect as it could possibly be. But I don't see that, so evidently it's not as perfect. Okay, let's come back and look at the... Um, let's uh, see what the what the quill readout is on the outside of it. Alright, now I don't know what happened if my camera shut off. I don't know exactly what the deal is here. But um, I ran outside quill readout and it was running out two and a half, three thousandths. I wasn't real impressed with that. But I went ahead, pulled the, the uh, R8 adapter out and uh, wiped out the inside of it and what I've done is we're just running inside the the uh, edge of the collet body here or the inside of the spindle and we're on the taper there and I've already run this once and I don't know like I say if the camera cut out or what the deal is but we're gonna run it again for you just so you've got an indication because this was running really good I don't
So we've got a little bit of movement of that needle, but not very much. I'm really happy with that. You know, if we're if we're that good all the way along, I'm going to be just happy as can be. So. Get this out of the way. I'm going to change out these indicators. Uh, stick my magnetic base up here on the quill or on the base someplace and see if we can't sweep the front edge of this table just to see what we've got. So, get it situated fairly straight here. Have to be down just a hair more. Table locks are loose. Let's go ahead and run clear down to a stop here on this end. Now we're going to assume these table adjustments are about right because I've not uh, I've not run this stop to stop yet. It's going to be about it. Oh, let's bring her in here to zero it out. Just let her run, see what it does. Uh, 
I'm actually surprised he hasn't dropped back to zero yet. That's not changed about five going back that way. Yeah, that's not dropped up nearly as much as when we rotated up the other way. Start sweeping back up this way again after the bottom dive, and we'll see no change we get in the first three or four inches. Because that only dropped off about half of what it was before. Starts to climb back up right in here a little bit. Well, anyway, I can't complain about that. I could, but it wouldn't do me any good. The only other thing I want to check is uh, I'll put the other indicator back on again. I'm going to put a block on the table, and I want to know how accurate our graduated dials are. Still relatively happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and do some of these other things off camera. Like, um, I want to set a vise on here. See how these little vices are going to set. I'm going to put uh, one of my 4 inch vices on here. There again, this size machine, we tend to go bigger than what we really need. I went through a 5 inch vise that I used for quite a while on the G1007. Uh, in reality, a 5 inch vise is too big. I bought these two 4 inch vices. I've been using one of them, at least one of them, part of the time, both of them on the G1007. Um, and I will eventually, once that CNC it, I will dedicate both of those vices since they're kind of a matched pair back to that uh, that machine and I'll buy another vice for on here. But it'll be a 4 inch vice. I think 4 inches is just about ideal for on this size machine. Um, other than that, things I've talked about are kind of my thoughts on it for the moment. You know, everything's subject to change, but uh, that's a little more information on it. Now you know as much as I know, and uh, comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.